um, talk about live interaction. We have um, someone who noticed online what was happening. Um, she, and, and I will introduce you now, Vivian, is, is, a, is a refugee and um, has a very powerful story yourself. And Vivian, I wonder if you can just join us and, and talk to us. That would be wonderful. refugees from back in 1981. Um, so it was really exciting for me to see the footage of those young, I think they were young Afghani students mm -hmm. in the Kuala Lumpur refugee camp because that's the camp that we were, we were at for a couple of months. Wow. Um, and so it, it was a while ago. I, I don't quite remember too, too much about, uh, about my experiences there. Uh, we were resettled to the United States when I was five years old, and I don't have much memory um, before the age of seven. So what I do know about our experience is basically from my mother and from all the, uh, you know, when Vietnamese refugee people get together in the United States, there's always talk about the good life back in Vietnam, and then the war, and then our refugee experiences. And, and I, I assume that's true for most refugee communities as well. Yes. And what what are some of the stories they talk about? Um, I mean, I guess it was quite a change to come to the to America for your parents, and 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 even for you as a young child, it would have been quite a change. Well, I, it it was a change, but I think young people are very resilient and adaptable. But um, as far as what do what did our family and friends talk about when we got together? They talked about you know the dangers of being a boat person. Uh, my mother and I, we were very, very lucky. We were, um, we, she, sold all of her, she sold all of her possessions and um, made way for, made, gave us passage on a fishing boat, basically, with about 94 or 95 other people. And we were all huddled underneath the, the, the deck of the fishing boat where normally they would, when they catch their fish, they would store it down there. And we all sailed out silently at the dead of night, um, sneaking out of, of uh, Vietnam. And uh, the fishermen on top, they were just going about their business as if they were going to, to go and catch some fish for the day. And um, so we, we made it out to sea, and we were adrift for a couple of weeks. And you know, the food ran out, the water ran out, and hope starts running out. And, uh, <laughs> And then uh, we were just so, so lucky because after the sec you know, after two weeks, um, we saw an American oil ship and uh, they came and they rescued us. And it was lucky that my mom speak English because she worked for the Americans when they were there. She um, was eventually trained to be a nurse to help the American soldiers in the medical ward or whatnot. And so she spoke a little English. And um, so when they rescued us and put us on the oil tanker ship, um, what they did was they rammed into our fishing boat so that they can legitimately report a rescue at sea. Otherwise, they would not be able to pick us up. And Malaysia was the closest uh, land or country nearby, and so that's, they dropped us off there, and that's where we stayed at a refugee camp in Kuala Lumpur for a couple of months until we were sponsored and we settled to the United States, um, where my aunt and my grandmother and my aunt's children were already at because they were airlifted out um, when the American troops left. Um, if any of you have seen some of the airlift pictures where tons of uh, Vietnamese people were going towards the fence, towards army, army bases to be airlifted out, but unfortunately not everyone was. Um, so, but given all of that, my mother and I were so, so lucky because our boat did not run into, uh, you know, storms or monsoons or anything, and we didn't run into Thai pirates, which is another another thing that the Vietnamese community talks about a lot. If you run into Thai pirates, you know, they, they come on board and they'll steal, they'll take all the worldly possessions that you have, which at that point is not much. And um, sometimes they rape women and sometimes they, they kill men also. and. And then there, you know, and if the Thai pirates didn't get you, and you were, and you were, I'm sorry, I don't know what that was. 
<laughs> but if the tie pirates did not, if you didn't run into tie pirates and the storms didn't get you, then you were just floating out to sea for a long time and you, again, you run out of food, out of water, out of hope. And so the people do start dying of starvation and dehydration. I mean, this, the story, the story is, powerful is powerful and, and, and tragic and, 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 and it's, and it's, so, it's amazing so amazing to see the way, you know, people like your mother must like have come mother here, mother and, here and yourself, and yourself as, a as a child and the courage to, to, get, through to get through those situations and, 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 and resettle, and resettle in, a in a new land. Now, I just have a, just have a, a, a question, question um, here. Um, here. Where did you hear, Where Vivian, did you hear um, Vivian? And how did you hear about this event? And I, I also hear that you rushed home, you know, and, and installed VC on your computer. And we're very grateful for that and very happy to have you here. But just if you could answer that question. Okay. Well, I, uh, I saw it on Facebook. Another friend of mine posted on her link, and uh, I was so excited. I, I went on, and I was kicking myself. Why didn't I hear about this sooner? Um, so I logged on, and I was listening and watching, and then as I mentioned before, when that clip of um, the Afghani refugee children in, in Kuala Lumpur refugee camp came on, I, I just logged on and I had to mention something because it just, to me, it was exciting. It was, it was exciting, but it was sad because that refugee camp is still there processing refugees, different types of refugees now, but the, the refugee problem still exists. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're so grateful to have you here. Um, also, I hear you're, you're organizing something in the next little while to, to help refugees. Is that correct? Yes, if you oh. would please uh, honor me and let me share with everyone Thanks, our, uh, our little refugee day event, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so um, my friend Dexter Sumner and I, we've co-founded uh, an org a grassroots movement organization called the Refugee Experience Series. And what we do is we create events, community events, that allow people to have heart-to-heart -heart discussions and learn more about refugee issues. And how we do this is through film events, um, online book clubs, and dinner discussions. So we typically we show a movie and then we have um, what I call not a panel discussion but a living room chat where the, our speakers are typically resettled refugees or they are people who work for organizations who assist and advocate for refugees or government workers who um, process and also help refugees as well. Um, so our next big thing coming up, our World Refugee Event, is going to be on June 27th. It's called the World Refugee Fundraiser Celebration, and we are partnering with our local International Rescue Committee and USA for UNHCR to raise awareness and to raise money and to gather um, volunteers in a local area to help resettle refugees. So that's going to be taking place in Arlington, Virginia, just five minutes outside of Washington, D.C., um, this Sunday uh, from 2 to 7. And um, we're going to be featuring the Sierra Leone Refugee All-Star documentary to kick off our event. So it's perfect that I'm coming on right after their practice session. Yeah. Oh, fantastic, and, and thank you. Um, just by the way, if people are interested in seeing a really good documentary, um, the Sierra Leone Refugee All-Stars, you'd agree, is, is, is both moving, interesting, um, funny, up, uplifting, and, uh, I mean, tragic in parts. But um, certainly, I, I, I would recommend it very highly. Vivian, you must have seen it yourself. Oh, have we lost sound? Have we lost sound? Yeah, okay. I've seen it many times. And can, I just, ask can Vivian, I just ask Vivian, you're not based you're not in Washington, D.C. Where do you live? Oh. I live in Arlington, Virginia. Oh, so our, our, our grassroots organization is not an official 501c3. We are just uh, community members interested in raising awareness about refugee issues, interested in being advocates on behalf of refugees, and we are all volunteers. Um, so our events usually take place in Washington, D.C but um, we just found a great venue in Virginia, so we're going to go and run with it. Fantastic. Hey, thank you thank so, you. so much. Really appreciate you joining us, and um, again, it's been inspiring. So Honor, what, thank what you. are we... I, I'm just trying to figure out what we're doing next. We're doing next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, oh, it's, um, oh, this, oh, is oh, this is one question. One question. Does your event... Does your event 
have a website people can go to? It does. Our website is so long. It's the period, refugee period, experience period, Google Pages dot com. Or you can just Google the Refugee Experience Series and it'll take you right to our website and you can click it on there and see the entire program of the event. Fantastic. So the Refugee Experience Series. That's correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Now, um, I've just been told that we've got um, a, a, the interview with Rose Mapendo that was done on Thursday, and it's never been shown before. And it, she is, um, again, an inspiration and a powerful story. So um, please stay and watch. You, you will be fascinated and you will be moved and, and, and hopefully you will get some insight.